So I just kind of designed it so that there was a workflow between where it was made, where it was glazed, and then where it was loaded in either of my kilns. We're here at Matthew Kelly's spot. This is the outside of the studio. Take us on right. a little tour. All right. Let's go. So inside, I have uh, initially when I uh, built this, I didn't have the gallery space here. Um, but after a little while, I thought uh, actually when I was still working for other potters, um, I, I got to a point where I was getting calls like from the gallery because they would have a sample of my work. And if anybody was interested in seeing more, then they would send them to me or have them call me. And I'd be working for somebody else and somebody would call me like, hey, are you open today? And there was a few times that I like left there to come home. And I'm like, I can't continue to do that. And like Danielle was home. So I thought, man, if I set up a gallery space, then like I could call her and be like, hey, could you like host some customers? So I set this up as just a little bit of a gallery space. Um, and it's a bit dusty and messy at the moment as, as we talked about. but. Uh, uh, before I do in-person sales, I always like take everything out and I get it all fresh and clean. And, and um, but uh, yeah, even even worked on this is my first like uh, finishing job for doing like uh, sheetrock and stuff like that. But uh, and even installed some track lighting up here for the gallery to look nice. But yeah, this is where I make and uh, where I sell in person. Actually, when I do my kiln opening sales, I set a lot of that stuff up outside. I do tables outside as long as it's nice weather because it's really nice to be out. Uh, have the sun makes all the pots look so good so but yeah this is where everything's made I have two different wheels in here I have a, a wheel that I sit down at and then when I uh, stand up and throw with that one and I have a, a Venco pug mill and it's not just for reclaiming clay I take all the clay I get even brand new out of the bag and I send it through the pug mill uh, for two reasons because I, I can actually um, it makes the clay just perfectly homogeneous but I can also cut up my clay balls in a lot more simple fashion because I can cut it based on length and I know how long the clay cut needs to be to be a certain weight and so I, I just can make a bunch of clay balls all at one time they're all perfectly uh, even weight and uh, the clay is perfectly homogeneous and then when I, I use two different clays right now one for my gas kiln and one for the wood kiln and so when I want to switch um, they're both high temperature clays so I just kind of like start throwing in the new clay and there'll be like a log that comes out that's kind of a mixture of the two and then uh, I can just run that back through and it becomes a kind of like homogenous of the two clays and then it's not really that big deal but it just works a little bit better um, the clay that I use in my wood kiln doesn't really work as well in the gas kiln but it's not the same on the inverse so I can use the clay for my gas kiln in the wood kiln so um, but I like the one I picked for the wood kiln a bit better in the wood kiln so that's why I use it for for the wood kiln and so from here, I make everything in here. Yeah, I have a wood stove for the winter time. Keeps me nice and warm and toasty. Um, and, to, and to create your wood ash. For yeah, your wood. yeah, yeah. All the, the glazes that I use that have wood ash, all the wood ash, uh, it just comes right out of that stove. And then uh, when it cools down, of course, and then I sift it and then mix my glazes with the, with the raw wood ash from there. Um, this is, uh, I have a couple of these racks around my shop uh, in the back and in here. So this one gets used a ton because I can change all the layers. I can put pots on here to dry. Uh, then when I want to do handles, I can set up the height that I want the board to be standing up putting on handles. Uh, but then uh, the cool thing is, is as sometimes as things are drying uh, or as they, even they're waiting for handles, sometimes I'll bring them back in this area here. Um, if I had my choice from the very beginning when I built all this, I probably would have built it all one level. But uh, just uh, going with what I had at the time, I built that thinking it was going to be enough room and then realized very quickly, I'm like, no, I need more space. So I built on this lean off the back and now I, over here I have my uh, electric kiln. I only bisfire fire in it is what I'm trying to say. Uh, and so I have a couple programs built into that. That's a, uh, a 1227 from Scott. And so that thing works really well. Uh, needs new elements at the moment, but uh, uh, then I have this spray booth here. So actually, and it also instead of having, having a banding wheel, one of the things I love is I have an old Brent Model A wheel that I use uh, to spin the pieces. These are just some pieces that I, I, I set in here to set pots on when I spray them. Um, so I spray some of my glaze. I spray just about all of my ash glazes that I use. I use three or four different ash glazes, and then sometimes I spray even other glazes. But this is a great. A uh, great way to apply glaze in specific areas or even if I have really large pieces and I can't really dip it into a bucket I can just spray the glaze on it, it works really nice. 
Um, but uh, also this wear rack is one of my favorite things I have because I have like these five foot long wear boards. Um, so when I finished building my, my shop, um, uh, I had ordered a whole bunch of wood for siding for the shop uh, from a local uh, sawyer who did rough cut lumber. And when I got done, I had all these boards left over. And I was like, oh man, they're all like uh, one by eight boards. And I thought, man, if I found a cabinet shop, they could resurface these. So I made them a whole bunch of these wear boards and then just made them perfectly so that, you know, I can have a board full of pots and I can just slide it in and out of the rack. And it just makes the storage of the pots uh, so, uh, so easy. And also, I even made these different heights on purpose because if I ever want to get super technical, anything that's on this rack can fit under a nine inch post. Hmm. So it's kind of like I built it. So this was like a six, a nine, a 12, like, uh, you know, so Genius. tried to get technical about it. Uh, a lot of table space here. I have um, a slab roller here that I use for any ornaments, uh, medallions, things like that. Uh, North Star slab rollers uh, works really well. Um, uh, you can't see them now, but behind here I actually have three huge filing cabinets that I keep all my glaze uh, material or a lot of my glaze materials in that are in smaller bags. Um, and so I mix glazes right here. Um, and then, yeah, these are all the Mako glazes that we just mixed up. I had to buy a whole bunch of new buckets just to try these in. So basically, yeah, all the workflow happens. It's all made in here. Most of uh, all the handling is done in there and then it's brought back here. Uh, Bis fired in either my electric kiln or my gas kiln out back. And then uh, this is where all the glazing happens. And then, uh, yeah, it's a good area for, like I said, greenware storage, bisware storage, and then glazing storage, and then loading in the kiln. So I just kind of designed it so that there was a workflow between where it was made, where it was glazed, and then where it was loaded in either of my kilns. And so out here, yeah, I have my gas kiln uh, in the early stages of fire right now. So. Uh, I, and I have lots of um, plastic uh, uh, or uh, tables that I can set up and move around when, when I need them, saw horses, things like this, more of those racks that you saw inside. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a great, like I said, great workflow. I also have a second driveway on my studio that comes up to this side where I can have wood delivered from my wood kiln. Um, and so, uh, yeah, there's a, a lot of, uh, definitely with the wood kiln, there's a lot more prep work than any other way of, of firing. Um, but all that is done uh, actually conveniently but purposely on the back side of my, stu uh, my kiln shed here so that it's away from the house so all the mess doesn't get seen quite as much from the house uh, because working with wood and, and cutting and prepping wood and all that stuff definitely uh, makes a little bit of a mess that's not always pretty. That's the way it all flows. Okay, so two questions that we have for you. One, if you could build a studio again, what would you do differently? And the second question is, how will the studio change or what are you gonna do over the next five to 10 years? Um, if I had it to do over again, um, with an unlimited amount of money, of course, I would have uh, built uh, probably a really nice gallery space up front with a workshop behind it all on like one level, like concrete floor, like so I'd have nice rolling racks to move everything around, like just to make ease of, uh, of workflow and, and, and all that. But definitely would have had a gallery space that was separated from my workspace so that all the pots didn't get dusty all the time from all the work going on with the clay. Um, I definitely probably would have already started building it all on one level if I had it to do over again because um, I, the stairs are okay, but definitely workflow is, is a lot harder having to take, you know, board of uh, 40 coffee mugs down a flight of stairs and put them on the rack. So that's definitely one thing I changed or would change in the future. And as far as the next five years, I definitely would like to still build a separate gallery space of some kind. Maybe, I don't know if, if online sales, if I start going that route, I might just not even worry about it. And, uh, but yeah, I, I'd either like to build a separate gallery space to have pots in and maybe even do an addition on the back part of my shop here so that I could have a little bit more space that was climate controlled for greenware storage and also for glazing and stuff like that because when it gets winter time, I, I don't really like dipping my hands into glaze that's 40 degrees. So uh, yeah, that's some things that probably will change over the next five years or so. What does a typical day look like for you? Like, and I know there's probably multiple kinds of different days. Yeah. Like you probably have a day where you're throwing all day or a day where you're like loading a kiln all day, but yeah. like, just give us a sense of what's a typical day look like. All right, yeah, there are definitely multiple kinds of days with all the different things going on. Um, but I definitely, um, when I'm in the process of making everything, I, I mean, I love throwing. Like, like that's probably one of my favorite parts of the whole process. So if I can throw something every day, you know, 
Um, I don't necessarily have like a schedule um, other than you know taking the kids to school a couple days a week where they go. Um, but yeah, I like to get out and get something thrown, you know, early in the day, kind of like you. Yeah. Um, and that way, if I if I can handle it later in the day or something like that. Um, and I mean, there's always probably some part of the process to do every single day, other yeah. than firing, because I definitely don't do that every day. Um, because of the larger um, electric kiln I have for bisque, it takes a little bit of time to fill that up. When I'm really in the mode of, of, of getting close to something, I probably spend a lot of time even later in the evenings throwing because yeah. I'm just kind of a night person. So um, I have been of late getting up a lot earlier and getting my day started. So that, that help, definitely helps. Uh, so I can take time to spend it with the family later in the day. But then sometimes if I'm if I'm in the middle of things and I really got a lot going on, after I put the kids to bed at night, it's right here in the backyard. I'll just come back out here for a couple hours and throw pots or do whatever I need to do. And it's uh, yeah, I get a lot of stuff done at 10, 11 o'clock at night sometimes. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah, it's been super fun. I have loved coming here. I've learned more than I could even have thought, and like makes me super excited to. It's just like really opens your mind to the possibilities in clay and like how it's so yeah. different and like even though I mean tons of people have wood kilns, tons of people have gas kilns and like most things have been done but you kind of see new things all the time too like yeah. little things that you can do differently so uh, gets me excited about the next you know you can spend a lifetime in clay and still not do oh, yeah. everything. I definitely I'll, I'll run out of, as one of my buddies Ron said he said I'll run out of days before I run out of ideas. Yeah yeah, yeah. So for sure. Cool. All right. Thanks, Matthew. Yeah. We'll see you guys in the next video. Wow.